it would be easier for me if Donald Trump were eliminated from competition. That is not how any of us should want to win because that is bad for this country. That is why I think it's important for those of us competing against Trump to take a strong stand against these politicized indictments. This is not about the weaponization of the government. This is not about um, the people that serve on grand juries in Washington, D.C. This is about Donald Trump losing the election, trying to use everything possible within his power to overturn that election. Political reaction pouring in after uh, Donald Trump has been indicted most recent time. That's from his 2024 Republican opponents. And while the former president may have three indictments under his belt, the fact is the majority of Republican voters still believe Biden's election was illegitimate. Two thirds of Republican voters. That was taken before this indictment came out, but it is still telling. This is momentous. The question is, what will it mean for Trump politically? What will it mean for fundraising? Our experts back with us. John, let me just let me start with you. Um, what do you, do you think those poll numbers changed significantly after? Perhaps not significantly. Um, look, I think, as you know, I think looking at through this through a purely political lens misses the point. This is about history. This is about law. This is about accountability for something that we've never seen in our history, something that would have made the founders, you know, to roll over in their graves. Um, obviously, there's a political component. In the short run, Donald Trump might well benefit, as he has with previous indictments, with fundraising, with a short-term rally around support. Um, in the long run, it hurts him. It hurts him and it hurts the Republican Party if they continue to nominate. Does it if he gets elected? Well, uh, that, that you're jumping a couple steps there. This is about may help in a Republican primary, hurts in a general. Why? Independent voters, moderate voters, moderate Republicans, uh, all of who see this for what it is, which is a disgrace and something that is, for many folks, disqualifying. And yet you've got a lot of candidates kind of trying to toe that line they've been doing. And, and I just think that's utterly insufficient to the evidence that's been presented. This is a time for choosing in a classic sense. Laura, um, in the wake of the 2022 midterms, where Republicans massively overperformed and every candidate that backed the Stop the Steal fake electors lie um, got wiped out, more or less, in states that they should have won, Republicans uh, were upset about that and made very clear, at least behind the scenes, they never wanted to pursue that again. Mm -hmm. This is now front and center. Mm -hmm. What do Republicans do? They're going to, well, the majority of them, I think, are going to stand by Trump. Uh, we've seen, especially House Republicans, are going to s call this uh, a weaponization of the Justice Department. I mean, time and time again, when they have had a chance to say that this is it, this is the red line, we are going to separate ourselves from President Trump, former president now, they don't do it. Speaker Kevin McCarthy, in a span of, uh, he wasn't speaker then, but in a span of just a few weeks, went from saying that Trump was responsible for the actions that took place on January 6th for the insurrection and then went down to Mar-a-Lago and pledged his history. loyalty. He changed, changed history. Changed history. I'm sorry. And so I, all of the, when Republicans uh, behind closed doors, and they've said it to me too, they'd love to see uh, the former president out of the picture, uh, but then they don't do anything in front of cameras or publicly to ensure that that happens. Mm -hmm. Peter Baker, uh, analysis on the front page of the Times this morning, can a sitting president spread lies about an election and try to employ the authority of the government to overturn the will of the voters without consequence, he asks. The question would have been just unimaginable a few years ago, but Trump raises the kind of specter more familiar in countries with histories of coups and juntas and mm -hmm. dictators. Mm -hmm. What do you make of where we are? I mean, this is what you worked last with Adam Kinzinger. This is what he was trying to say chairing that committee over and over and over again. This is why it's important for Republicans like he and Liz Cheney and others to press for these answers. It has to come from Republicans. I mean, largely what we saw with, with the January 6th committee's work was Republicans speaking truth to what happened. So trying to speak to Republicans and what I think candidates should do, and I'll give them a little free advice, is point out some of these things about the Trump lies that, that so many people told him without how much evidence do you need that the election was not stolen? Republicans were telling him that. So if, he's, if he truly believes that he won, should not we question his competence? Mm -hmm. Should we not wonder about where he is mm -hmm. mentally? And so you start chipping away at him. Talk about the 40 million, which is obviously growing, the number that he has taken from people who make thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year. He's taking their donations for his legal bills. A self-proclaimed you know, millionaire billionaire needs their... Five dollars for his campaign fund or his uh, legal fees. Start chipping away at Donald Trump by putting Republicans 
and their own words against him. Jeremy, the timing of this, you know, you heard from Trump's lawyer last night, bring this up a little bit. Trump, in one of his eight zillion posts on his social media platform, was talking about why didn't they bring it two and a half years ago, the why did they bring it today? It's because of the campaign. Is it because of the campaign? Absolutely not. So why did it take so long? So we had Congress doing their investigation mm -hmm. and doing their job. And that's not criminal. They can't prosecute. And then it was referred. But also remember that everything is growing in part because Donald Trump, and you talk about using your words against you, says so much and does so much, and he's his own worst enemy. And they, meaning the government, and here Jack Smith, has to do his due diligence. And when you hear him and you listen to him, at least I did subjectively, found him to be a sort of tangible integrity. Um, and, and just exude that this professionalism and concern, whether or not ultimately you prove your case beyond a reasonable doubt is separate, but he exuded that. And I think that it's not about politics at all. It's about there comes a point in time that you have to take a stand and you have to follow the evidence and you have to pursue justice. But Maura, you, you guys battled, the committee battled with the Justice Department. At least you guys didn't want to say that publicly, but it was pretty clear that you guys were going back and forth with them and there was a lot of frustration on your side with how DOJ was operating. Was there a shift, or did you guys just not know what they were working on? My understanding is that there really was not collaboration in a lot of ways, which led to a lot of frustration. And again, some of the witnesses they had that wouldn't speak to us because they were already in cooperation with DOJ. So I had some issues as well and some friction there to getting the answers. And DOJ didn't need, you meant to refer, DOJ didn't need any referral, by the way. I should just know no, that. No, no, they, they, you're 100% correct. But Congress had an opportunity. And if I recall, and if I'm mistaken, I, I apologize. But one of the defenses, if you will, from Trump and his team was, you know, this is not for Congress. If it should be prosecuted, it should be prosecuted. And now we're here. And, you know, you sort of get what you ask for, and it's pursued for the right reasons. But I, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. yeah, I'll just say, first of all, you all in the committee deserve a lot of credit for moving this forward. You know, by, by all accounts, ahead of the DOJ, and some kids prodding the DOJ in, to in do In the middle of a lot of skepticism, job. by the way. Absolutely. At the, at the start of the process. Absolutely. The, the other thing is, and we saw the pushback from, from some of the candidates saying, this is inappropriate for a legal matter. This should have been handled within the realm of politics. Let's get some, some consistency here. You know, in the second impeachment of Donald Trump, the argument against impeaching was that this was the proper channel was the ju justice system was the legal system as a private citizen. Now, some people were consistent and said, you know what, we should convict because this shouldn't be played out in the courts. But be consistent. If you said he shouldn't be impeached the second time, then right. this is what you said was McConnell the righteous remedy. To the courts. Actually, do we have that sound um, of the McConnell uh, speech in the way, after, shortly after his vote against mm -hmm. uh, the, the going or convicting the president, mm -hmm. uh, former president at that point, um, which was, McConnell has been quiet about this, yes. and I think, I, I don't think people would question his consistency, he just doesn't talk about it, but this is what he said, and this is exactly what John's referring to. Listen. President Trump is still liable for everything he did while he was in office. As an ordinary citizen, unless the statute of limitations is run, still liable for everything he did while he was in office. Didn't get away with anything yet. Yeah. We have a criminal justice system in this country. We have civil litigation. And former presidents are not immune from being accountable by either one. The reason, and I want, I want you to keep going, but if you looked at the statements from Republican senators who voted against conviction, by the dozens, it was impeachment is not the realm there's constitutional questionality related to it because he is now a former president. Mm -hmm. McConnell, who backed that theory, and I think it was a pretty close call for him, underscoring that it's because there's a judicial process and that's where this should be handled, which is the opposite of what you heard everybody say yesterday. To some that's exactly right, and that's why it's essential to point out. You know, if you said this shouldn't be handled this way, then you should have voted to convict because none of this would have occurred. But the folks who didn't vote to convict because they said this was the proper channel, this is what's happening right now. So it's not too much for us to ask consistency. Uh, I would note McConnell has not said anything, yes. um, has not put out a statement, nor has John Thune, the number two in the Senate Republican Conference, as far as I'm aware, up to this point. Um, that silence is not subtle and rather intentional. All right, guys, stay with us. The third criminal indictment for former President Trump is a first for America in more ways than one. More on that next. Republicans on Capitol Hill pointed at the White House this morning, reacting from Congress ahead.